Welcome back to the Lights Out podcast. Bedtime stories for boys and girls for when the lights go out. Good evening, boys and girls. Are you ready for bed? Are you all snuggled up and ready for another Lights Out bedtime story? Because you're in for a treat tonight. Because tonight's story is called The Monster Zoo by Amy Sparks and Sarah Ogilvy. Once upon a time, one day, imagine my surprise to find that I had won a prize. A note came in the post to say, you can run the zoo today. I grabbed my bike so keen to go and pedaled quickly down the roads. I whizzed through woods, past hills so green, to the strangest zoo I'd ever seen. The keeper beamed and skipped to me. He rubbed his hands <clears throat> so gleefully. Please clean these cages, feed the beasts. They get quite cross without their fists. Oh dear, he said. I have a hunch. The squirrel hasn't had its lunch. It chews and chomps and chomps a lot and gobbles children on the spot. So if you see it, do take care. Its tummy rumbles, so beware. <laughs> I cannot stop, I must away. Hooray! Today's my holiday. Then off he sprinted with a grin. I turned the key and tiptoed in. My jaw hit the floor, my eyes popped wide. I couldn't believe the mess inside. The naughty creatures stole my hat. My broom became their cricket bat. And when I went to clean the floor, they kicked and flicked and smashed the door. They scrambled high, rolled on the ground. They howled and yelled and raced around. The hooves flung dung with their paws. They bent the trees and banged the doors. Now I'd been left to run the zoo, but what on earth was I to do? I took my broom, replaced my hat, and loudly said, Enough of that! I grabbed the growling, grimble grow. When he from his huge and hairy jaws there came a mighty frightening roar. His head was high, he looked quite proud until I roared back twice as loud. I tracked the dangling dingle bee, which couldn't hide as well as me, and I found the morph, split up the quees, and caught the humple in the trees. I jumped upon the purple gurps, I leaned to duck their fiery burbs. I rolled till they couldn't run no more, they slumped back home and shut their door. I fed the beasts. They munched and crunched. I wish I had time for lunch. A flying flump leapt from the tree, but couldn't jump as fast as me. The furry furbles tickled my nose. I'm glad they have such ticklish toes. But then, among the squawks and chirps, and the fiery burps and the purple gurps, I heard a rumble, Tommy gurgle, and then I saw the scary squirgle. It licked its lips quite hungrily but just smiled and said, You see, squiggles are afraid of me. Serve with chips, they're really yum. And squiggle, that gurgle, came from my tum. Just then the keeper reappeared. He looked more peaceful, calm and cheered. They're good as gold, the keeper puzzled. Squiggle purred and furble nuzzled. Yes, I said and passed the key. I soon showed them that the boss was me. The keeper stared, mouth open wide. I waved goodbye and I began to ride. I whizzed past hills and through the wood. I think today was rather good. Next day, imagine my surprise to find that won another prize. You've won first place. Well done to you. Oh, please come back and run the zoo. The end. Wow, we, that was an amazing book about monsters in the zoo, and the little boy who went to run the zoo for a day while the keeper had a holiday. I think you have to look at the pictures in his book because they're rather colourful and amazing. Anyway, that was The Monster Zoo by Amy Sparks and Sarah Ogilvy. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the monsters bite. They can't bite. They're all in the zoo. See you tomorrow for another Lights Out Bedtime Story, only here on the Lights Out Podcast. Bedtime stories for little zookeepers like you.